everyone, welcome back to the latest ASEAN News with me, Vanessa. Leaders from Japan and Indonesia call for strengthening in security and business ties on transfer of defense technology and equipment. In bilateral meeting between Japan and Indonesia, two delegations talks to strengthen cooperation on defense areas. Both countries to speed up on exports of defense gear and technologies to the Southeast Asian nations and have defense and foreign ministers reflecting growing concerns over China's regional assertiveness. To further advance a security defense cooperation between the two countries amid the changing regional situation, we've agreed to hold a meeting on foreign and defense ministries at an early date to accelerate talks over the transfer of defense equipment and technology and to promote cultivating human resources in the field, including execution of maritime law. The chief government also says that Japan will extend 50 billion yen in long-term low-interest loans to Indonesia, which has been hit hard by the coronavirus pandemic, suffering the highest number of infections and deaths in Southeast Asia. Indonesian President Joko Widodo says partnership between Tokyo and Jakarta very important and he hopes that the dispute on the South China Sea could be solved. Kemitraan Indonesia Jepang dalam memperkuat kerjasama multilateral. I also underline the hope that the South China Sea can continue to be a sea of peace and stability. Rivalitas yang semakin menajam antara kekuatan besar dunia. The objectives of the Prime Minister's visit talks on the maritime areas where disputes in the South China Sea and also the economy that has suffered from a decline due of a new coronavirus outbreak which has killed thousands of people around the world. The floods continues increase in Cambodia, which have killed more than 30 people. Regarding heavy rains that started on 5th of October, which caused flash floods and landslides in Cambodia, so far flood waters continue to flow on roads all over Cambodia. Local media reports at least 34 people have died in flash floods and triggering evacuations and inundating infrastructures across the country. And at least 240,000 hectares of farmland have been flooded, affecting over 245,000 people, including the capital of Phnom Penh, where thousands have been evacuated. Local broadcasters, PNN, shows footage of soldiers evacuating villagers from flood houses in northwest Bantiai Menchiai province. Ongoing flooding killed dozens across Southeast Asian nations since early October. The region has suffered particularly heavy rainfall amid the onset of the La Nina weather system, which is characterized by unusually cold temperatures in the equatorial Pacific Ocean. Over 100 people dead and dozens still missing by natural disaster in Vietnam. Vietnamese authorities raises the death toll from floods and landslides over 100 deaths in the trigger by heavy rain since early October. Rescue teams and disaster officials are standby and preparing equipment in the Philippines, awaiting the arrival on the main island of Luzon, which could bring heavy rains and cause mudslides. State television shows people sitting on the roofs, waiting for aid from rescuers in Quang Bin province, where floods have blocked roads and cut power. <laughs> I am sitting on a chair of the roof's bin. I have not eaten since yesterday. Flood water is at the roof level. We have nothing. No food, no phone, nothing. My family has seven people, a few kids and a sister who just gave birth a month ago. Too many people. Floods and mudslides during October have killed at least 105 people in central Vietnam and left 27 missing, among those 15 construction workers of a hydropower dam project buried under a mudslide. At least 178,000 homes, nearly 7,000 hectares of crops have been impacted and 700,000 farm animals killed, as the official data showed. Meanwhile, local media report, authorities rushes to evacuate residents from floods locals as tropical storm Saudel drew closer to the Southeast Asian nations. Vietnam's weather agency says central Vietnam already reeling from its most severe flooding in two decades is now bracing for tropical storm Saudel a weather event which lashes in the Philippines. Sodil is expected to hit the country at full strength. Thailand departs freeze local coronavirus cases. Public health authorities say Thailand registered first two locally transmit cases of the coronavirus in more than one month. The cases are among two Myanmar nationals living near the border, 
where infections have been surging recently. At the moment, we can confirm that there are two people, husband and wife, who are infected. Apart from them, their daughter, granddaughter and grandson have also tested positive preliminarily. We need to test them again to confirm. But all of the five persons are now in the hospital. Thai official says the two couple are tested positive for coronavirus. They show no symptoms, but results are positive. Three other members of their family also tested positive preliminarily, but further testing is needed to confirm their cases. The last known local case in Thailand was in early September. Officials in Mysot, a Thailand border town where the couple have resided, have set up checkpoints and started disinfection activities. Local residents are advised to limit their movements and avoid going outside of their communities. According to Thailand officials, 10 other Burmese migrants who had been in close contact with the infected family have been taken to a local quarantine facility. Thailand court grants 20 protesters on bail. The Thailand Lawyers for Human Rights Group says a Thailand court grants bail to 19 people who had been arrested in connection with three months of protest against the government and the monarchy. The group says those released did not include any of the main protest leaders. Reuters is unable to contact the court to confirm the granting of bail. Local television shows footage of the protesters just after they released chanting and flashing the Hunger Games inspired Three Fingers Salute, which is now synonymous with the anti-government protest. Since mid-July, street protests are the biggest challenge in decades to the monarchy under King Mahavajila Longkorn and to Prime Minister Prayut Chan Ocha, who rejects accusations of engineering an election last year to keep power. Protests only gained momentum since the government announced a ban and arrest dozens of protesters, including many prominent leaders. Brazil rejects plan to buy Sinovac vaccine from China. Brazilian President Jair Bolsonaro says the government will not buy a COVID-19 vaccine from China's Sinovac one day after the health minister said it will be included in the nation's immunization program. He adds, Pauzela have misinterpreted during the meeting with Brazil's governors, and all vaccines are rejected until regulatory approval is given. Bolsonaro, a far-right leader who has drawn close to U.S. President Donald Trump, has made disparaging remarks about China in the past, even though it is Brazil's largest trade partner. Meanwhile, Health Minister Eduardo Pazuello says in a meeting with state governors that the ministry will buy the Sinovac vaccine to include in the immunization program along with the AstraZeneca Oxford vaccine. Sao Paulo State Biomedical Research Center, the Butantan Institute, is testing the Sinovac vaccine. Sinovac did not immediately respond to request for comment. Butantan Institute Director Dimas Kovas reported that the manufacturing of 46 million doses of Sinovac vaccine will be made available even if it's not included in the federal immunization program. Butantan will produce 46 million doses that will be made available to the national immunization program at the end of the year. If they are incorporated into the national immunization program happens as planned, these vaccines will be ready to be distributed throughout the country. If not, they will also be available, which is a matter of financing. At this moment, it is a critical question because obviously these vaccines have a cost. According to the Health Ministry's statistics, Brazil has been amongst the world's hardest hit nations by the pandemic, with more than 5 million infections and nearly 155,000 COVID-19 deaths. The inclusion of the vaccine calls for CoronaVac in the national vaccination program of a nation of 230 million people will be a major success for Sinovac, called to be one of the world's first immunization efforts against the coronavirus. World Health Organization praises East Asian countries in combating COVID-19. WHO says many countries in the East Asia have made huge progress in fighting against COVID-19. Many countries uh, in, in East Asia uh, and many territories and health authorities have made huge progress against the disease and have managed to really crush that curve and keep it down and managed to sustain that through uh, uh, a very long time of, of low numbers. Ryan points out that the Asian countries could make such achievements because their population has shown higher level of trust in their governments who keep up measures longer. Second thing, obviously, there is an advantage in Asia. And again, I think people in Asia, co communities in Asia, uh, do have higher levels of trust and compliance in government. And they've tended to be able to implement uh, for longer some of the measures that have been required of them in terms of their own behaviour.
He speaks highly of East Asian countries' efforts in preserving with anti-COVID-19 measures and increasing testing and clinical capacity. Many of these countries had serious follow-through. Once they got the numbers down, they followed through. They didn't start reducing testing centres, they increased testing centres, they didn't start reducing clinical capacity, they increased clinical capacity. In other words, they, they ran through the finish line and beyond and they kept running because they knew the race wasn't over. That finish line was false. Uh, too many countries have put an imaginary finishing line um, and when they crossed it may have decelerated uh, some of their activities. In addition, the WHO official notes that African countries are less affected by the COVID-19 pandemic and their populations are relatively young. Local communities on the continent are also intervening the spread of the pandemic and have the ability to find cases and track contacts. All these have helped African countries prevent the worst from happening. At least nine people dead in South Korea after getting flu shots to combat COVID-19. Nine people dead after getting flu shots in South Korea, and authorities say raising concerns over the vaccine safety, as the seasonal inoculation program is expanded to head of potential COVID-19 complications. Nevertheless, some residents say they still worry because dozens of people are queuing at the hospital in Seoul for flu shots. As a mother of a child, I'm worried about the situation. I'll wait until the time that we can confirm the vaccine is safe. Since we wear a face mask due to COVID-19, and it also can prevent the flu. Director of the Korean Disease Control and Prevention Agency, Jong Ong Kyung, says during briefing the authorities are investigating into the deaths of the people who had received the shots, but so far do not find evidence that can link the deaths to the vaccines. Therefore, no reason to suspend the vaccination program. Officials announced plans to produce 20 more percent flu vaccines for the winter than the previous year to inoculate 30 million people. The objectives to prevent patients with flu and COVID-19 exposure. However, the start of the free jab program for around 19 million eligible people are suspended after it was discovered that some 5 million doses, which need to be refrigerated, had been exposed to room temperature while being transported to a medical facility. Japan opposes action in the South China Sea. Japanese Prime Minister at news conference in Indonesia capital Jakarta says Japan opposes any actions that escalate tension in the East and South China Seas. Suga's visit to the two Southeast Asian countries, his first overseas trip since taking office last month, is part of Japan's efforts to bolster ties with key regional countries amid concerns about China's growing assertiveness in the region that China has denounced the grouping of the fourth democracy as a mini-NATO aimed to containing its development. Japan is opposed to any actions that escalate tension in the South China Sea. Let me stress the importance of all parties concerning the South China Sea issues not resorting to force or coercion, but working towards peaceful resolutions of the disputes based on the international law. From Japan's perspective, this free and open Indo-Pacific is not aimed at any one country. We think we can cooperate with any country that we share ideas with. Several members of ASEAN have territorial disputes with China in the vital South China Sea, but are wary of alienating the group's major economic partner and getting entangled in an intense confrontation between Washington and Beijing. Residents still inundated by floods after heavy rain in Thailand. Rescuers wade through floods, streets and houses days after a bridge in a reservoir in Thailand continued to inundate a residential area. Rescuers share images of Thailand's northeastern Makon Rajasima province with Reuters, show residents still having to block entranceway to their homes with sandbags and float water rushes around their compounds. Heavy downpours bring by a depression swell, the Lam Pra Ploeng Reservoir causing part of its dike to collapse and flooding in Pak Tong Chai, prompting authorities to discharge water to a nearby dam. More rain is in forecast in the coming days in a large Oswati of Thailand. And thanks for watching. Have a nice day. We'll see you again.